In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Do please be seated for our notices. A warm welcome to the Parish Church of St John the Baptist this morning for our sung Eucharist this second Sunday of Epiphany. Thank you for continuing to wear face covering, um, which remains mandatory in places of worship at this time. There um, is a Sunday school, um, children activities for um, any children who may be with us today. Um, do um, meet, um, you come to the front of the church now if you want to, um, or when we sing the Gloria, um, then um, we're going to go out to the uh, uh, activities at the back of church. So um, with Anne, um, sitting at the front in the red, um, do, do join with those. Please stay for refreshments, which will be served after the service. Uh, next Sunday, our 10 o'clock Sung Eucharist will be at All Saints Church. Um, and the next service here at uh, Windsor Parish Church will be on the 6th of February. That's three weeks today. That's a special service to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the accession of Her Majesty the Queen. Um, that will be at the usual time of 10 o'clock. So I invite you now to stand as we sing our opening hymn, Immortal Invisible. Upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Lord Jesus, illuminate the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, and stop our ears to hear your living word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we stand, so we pray the collect, the prayer for this day. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 to 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your hand. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, 
so shall your God rejoice over you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians, verses 12.1 to 11. Concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
Аллилуйя, аллилуйя, аллилуйя. Go and make disciples of all the nations, says the Lord. I am with you always, to the end of the age. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is it that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There are occasions in life when something happens which changes your whole world view. So much change for me at that wedding in Cana, that it is only now, looking back years later, that things have begun to fit into place. I suppose as the years go by, we try to make sense of what has gone before in the light of our life experience. I was just a young servant back then, steeped, of course, in the faith of my ancestors. I knew my scriptures, It had always been there in my life from my very earliest days. We were a devout family. We lived a simple life, had all we needed. Servanthood was in our family genes. There's no shame about being a servant, and I have always been fortunate in my masters. We all have different gifts, but it's the same God who has given them to us and accelerates in us. Being a good and faithful servant is as good a gift as another. But I digress. That wedding, what a day. It began normally enough, I suppose, the happy couple surrounded by vast numbers of family and friends. I recognised most of the locals as I stood around waiting for instruction from the steward. Of course, the whole community had been invited, as they always are. Life seems to be one big party for some of them. There were quite a few from Nazareth, which I suppose wasn't that surprising, given its proximity to our little village of Cana. 
I don't know many of the Nazareth crowd, but I remember noticing the group of 12 or so young men and women who arrived together and stayed chatting together as the day drew on. There was an older woman with them. I remember thinking that she was probably the mother of one of them. Did she know the bride and groom? Or was she there to keep an eye on things? So there we all were, watching from the sidelines in case we were needed for anything, standing as we servants usually did in the corner of the room by where the stone water jars are kept. It was then that we first heard the rumour that the wine had run out. Such a calamity would be social ruin for the newly married couple. If they couldn't supply the hospitality, which is such a key part of our Jewish life, they would have a very rocky start to their married life. How could this have happened? Did someone under order? Were there too many gate crashes? What a disaster! We servants couldn't stop chattering about it, despite a stern look from the steward. Anyway, there seemed to be some sort of commotion in the group of young men from Nazareth. The older woman and one of the men were having a heated conversation. It looked as if she was telling him to do something he didn't want to do. She must be his mother, I thought. And then, quite unexpectedly, she came towards us. Do whatever he tells you, she said. We looked at one another, confused and, to be honest, rather scared and apprehensive. We took our orders from the steward, not from some random young man from Nazareth. But here he was, following behind. He had a certain authority to him in the way he approached us, which was at the same time disarming and reassuring. Fill the jars with water, he said. Nothing else. As if water would solve the problem. But we did as he told us. I thought the steward would intervene, demanding to know what we were doing, meddling with the purification jars. But he seemed as transfixed as the rest of us. So we did what the young man said, filling the jars to the brim with water. It was definitely water. I know it was, because I did the filling. And when we had filled them, this young man from Nazareth told us to draw some out and take it to the steward. Well, I was nearest, so I picked up a drinking vessel, dipped it into one of the jars, and this is the weirdest thing. I saw it was filled with sweet wine. I handed it silently to the steward. I don't think I could have said anything, even if I had tried. I was stunned, speechless. The steward looked pretty shaken too, after he had tasted what was in the vessel. He gave me a very strange look, but he recovered his composure. I was very impressed with that and handed it to the bridegroom with those words which I'll never forget. You have kept the good wine until now. I looked around for the young man from Nazareth, but he was back with his friends. They were patting him on the back and congratulating him for saving the day and calling him special and full of glory. I heard one of them say, well, mate, we believe in you now, which struck me as a rather odd thing to say. Some wedding that was. Memorable doesn't even capture half of it. Life-changing, more like. Because after that day, I heard more and more about the young man from Nazareth. I discovered his name, and began to realize that I had been part of something very, very special, a miracle. Well, some called it a sign. His first sign, they said. 
There were others to come, feeding 5,000 hungry people, calming a violent storm, even bringing someone back from the dead. I often wondered why he began by turning water into wine. I think it is perhaps a picture of all that he came to do. He took what was there, the empty jars, and showed that it could be something else, something which is tired, worn out, empty of joy and lacking in purpose, can be transformed. It can be turned into something rich, fragrant, and full of joy through his presence. It seems to me that this is about us, you and me, far more than about water jars and wine. And I think too, it was about abundance, the abundance of God's love for us. That young man from Nazareth said himself later on, I come to give life, life in abundance. The guests went from having no wine at all to having gallons and gallons of it. He provided more, much more than we needed. And it was a wedding feast. All good Jews know that marriage is a symbol of the relationship between God and his people. It's in the writing of the prophet Isaiah. The prophet tells us that God will take delight in his people, just like a groom and his bride. For as a young man marries a young woman, and as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Do whatever he tells you, his mother said to us. And we did. We were part of the miraculous thing which happened. That is what faith is all about. Responding to the word of Jesus, trusting that his word will be fulfilled, trusting that as he transformed the water into wine, so he will transform us and lead us into the kingdom where the best wine is yet to come. And that's how that day changed my life forever. Amen. So we stand to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. The response to the bidding, Lord of life and love, is renew and refresh us. Lord of life and love, renew and refresh us. Blessed are you, Lord our God, giver of joy and life. To you be praise and glory forever. In your presence is the fullness of joy. With you is life and life eternal. Lord God, strength of the weak and light to all who walk in darkness. Help us to proclaim your saving power, not only in words, but also by our lives. Help us to reveal the joy of knowing you and your love. We ask you to bless all preachers and teachers of the faith, guide all who study scriptures, 
and all her learning through the example of others. We pray for all who are being prepared for confirmation at this time. Lord of life and love, renew and refresh us. Lord, we pray for the world and the right use of its resources. We ask for your blessing upon any who are suffering from natural disasters, upon those suffering from famine or flood. Remember all whose resources are running low, and we pray for the world poor and all who are without work or proper shelter. Lord of life and love, and refresh us. We give thanks for all who have supplied us with our daily needs, for our homes and for our loved ones. We ask your blessing on homes that are suffering from great debt, or where the household is unable to cope through various troubles. Lord of life and love, Renew, Renew and refresh us. We give thanks for our well-being and we pray for all who are struggling at this time. Remember all those who are suffering from physical disability or weakness, all who are losing agility or mobility. We pray for all who do not have the strength to cope on their own. We ask your blessing upon those who have been taken into care. We pray for the people we know who are sick at present, including the ones on our pew leaflet. John King, Michael, Anne Harding, Nick Coke, Evelyn Hill, Charlotte, Betty Delty and Cherry. Lord of life and love, renew, renew and, refresh. and refresh us. We give thanks for the resurrection of our Lord and for the promise of life eternal. We pray for our friends and loved ones departed and ask that they may know newness and fullness of life in your kingdom. We pray today especially for Anthony Hawthorne, Gloria Ringrose, Anthony Tony Moore, and John Basto. Rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints and pray that we may share with them in glory. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for, for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has, has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given it to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you.
Open the heavens, Holy Spirit, for us to see Jesus interceding for us, that we may we be willing to share his baptism, ready to share his cup, and strengthened to serve him forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who were sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a holy people in Jesus Christ our Lord. You renew that mystery in bread and wine to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Baptist, St. Stephen, St. Agnes, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We 
rejoicing in the presence of God here and now. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, God here, here among, among us, us the life in the midst of us. Bring us, us to for light and life. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, Lord give, give us this bread, bread always. Draw near in faith. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have spoken your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your love. Amen. Would you like to stand? May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water, welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the word of Glory.